It's a bit weird because the Washington football team is now called the Washington Commanders, but I'm talking about them last year, and last year they were called Washington. So for this topic, I'm just going to refer to them as Washington, and then after this topic from here on out, we'll start referring to them as the Commanders, which feels weird, but I got to get used to it, and I got to just accept it. So in my opinion, Washington's 2021 season got ruined by injuries. Curtis Samuel, their free agent receiver, got hurt. He only played in five games. Tight end Logan Thomas got hurt. Chase Young, their awesome defensive end, got hurt. And uh, the biggest one was that their starting quarterback, Ryan Fitzpatrick, got hurt in the very first game of the year. He ended up needing season-ending hip surgery. And it was just a disappointing year all around for Washington. I predicted they would go 10-7. and seven. Uh, I thought they would win the division at 10-7. and seven. I really undervalued how good the Dallas Cowboys would be. The reality is that Washington went 7-10. and 10. And it is interesting, though, because 10-7 and seven would have got them into the playoffs. Their division rival, the Philadelphia Eagles, got into the playoffs with nine wins. And I was so excited to see Ryan Fitzpatrick play in Washington. I felt like team politics in Tampa with Jameis Winston or with Tua in Miami kept those teams from committing to him as their starting quarterback. But I thought he was capable of being the starting quarterback in Tampa and in Miami. And I thought Washington was this unique great opportunity for him where I I thought it was all going to come together. He found a team that wanted him, that he could use him as a mercenary for a year or two. He could be their starting quarterback. They were a playoff-ready team. He came in, and bam, game one, he gets hurt. He was one for three passing with 13 yards on the entire season. That's literally all he did. And that's like, oh, man, it's so disappointing. And that leads me to question number one. From Patrick, he wrote in on Patreon, he said, remember that's patreon.com forward slash Jack Schaumler. Patrick said, going into the year, I thought the defense in Washington was going to be a strength, but they massively underperformed. So my question is, what happened there? It seemed like especially Chase Young wasn't all that great this year, or am I wrong there? So Washington had the 22nd ranked defense in the NFL. That's definitely not great at all. And their 2022 Number two overall pick, sorry, 2022. They're 2020, a lot of twos in there. 2020, number two overall pick, Chase Young, defensive end, only played in nine games. He tore his ACL. In those nine games, he didn't play great still. He only had one and a half sacks. But I would say that similar to a pitcher in baseball, a defense needs run support. If your offense isn't scoring points, it's really hard if you're a defense to do well, especially if you're not scoring points and you're – you know, turning over the ball or having lots of quick drives and not, you know, they, they, towards the end of there, you saw Washington was like, we just need to have lots of time of possession. And the only real receiving threat they had for most of the year was Terry McLaurin, star receiver. I love him. He played well, 77 catches, 1,053 yards, five touchdown catches. Sure. But other than Terry McLaurin, there was no other real contributor from the receiving core. I mean, the second leading receiver for Washington was their running back, J.D. McKissick, who had 397 yards receiving. No other receiver even had 400 yards beside Terry McLaurin all year. Look, for most of the year, Washington had a backup quarterback playing, and that leads me to a question from ENK. He said this, Hey, Zach, during the year, you said you believe Taylor Heineke could be Washington's starting quarterback. Do you still stand by that? I, I hope I didn't say that. I really have always stood by that Taylor Heineke is a duct tape quarterback, meaning that he's fine, but he's limited as a solution to a long-term problem. He's kind of right on the edge of a really good backup or a okay to medium level starter. He's certainly not a long-term solution at the quarterback position for Washington. And if Ryan Fitzpatrick was healthy, you know, plus Curtis Samuel, plus Logan Thomas, plus Chase Young, I, I am really convinced this football team could have won more than three games. Um, You know, they lost to Philadelphia by four points, and that's a game where Taylor Heineke threw a key interception in the end zone late in the game. They lost to Dallas by seven. Taylor Heineke had two turnovers. Uh, There's a lot of games that make me wonder, what if? They lost to Denver by seven. They lost to Philly by 10. They lost to the Chargers by four points when Ryan Fitzpatrick got hurt. And unfortunately, Washington just could not overcome all of the injuries they had last year. I mean, it's just too many key players went down, and 
really that's the difference in their year because if they won three more of those games, 10 and 7 gets them into the playoffs and 7 and 10 clearly does not. I mean, that's it's a three game swing, and I think the key players got hurt really impacted those three games. And, um, uh, you know, let me know what you think of Washington's year. Could they have won three more games if everybody stayed healthy? And, um, you know, do you think that Ryan Fitzpatrick would have been the answer if he'd been healthy? Because I certainly do. And I'm really disappointed that we didn't get to see kind of a cool storyline there with Ryan Fitzpatrick finally getting a football team to commit to him. And instead he got hurt. And uh, we don't even know if he's going to come back next year. He, he hasn't announced he's retiring, but um, I don't know what to make of it. So uh, we'll see what happens with Ryan Fitzpatrick moving forward. And uh, Washington's year just unfortunately got totally brought down by injuries.